the Tigers. And away we go from Frank Howard Field. Lewis will touch a knee, and the Owls will scrimmage from their 25 yard line. And here is 24, nearly 25 year old Casey Thompson. And Tim, here are the NFL quarterbacks who are younger than Casey Thompson. And we'll start with Jordan Love, Justin Fields, Desmond Ritter, Trevor Lawrence, Brock Purdy, Sam Howell, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson. They all start this week. Hey, they sure do. And Casey Thompson is his third school. He's got a lot of experience. He also has the maturity about him. And I think that coaching staff at FAU really like, appreciate, and think it's good for their football team. Kobe Lewis will be the running back. Herman's offensive coordinator is a former NFL trigger man in his own right, Charlie Fry. Their offense pumping up about 340 yards a ball game. They're one and one on the year. Going to hand to Lewis trying to get to the right side. He's got five. He's got 10. He's got 15. It's a 16 yard run for Kobe Lewis on the first snap of the game. Shoved out of bounds by Sheridan Jones. Well, what a way to start for FAU. I mean, it's really it's just a split zone run play. They get a nice crack from the wide receiver position, and it's a good start for FAU. Yeah, went right behind the right guard, Kamar Bell, a transfer from Auburn, and Chaz Neal, who started his career at Florida State. 16-yard run. Thompson and the Owls operate at the 41. Quick throw. Lewis had to reach back for that. Incomplete. R.J. Mickens was about ready to close the door for Clemson in coverage. This Florida Atlantic offense with Thompson. And he's a guy that, Tim, when he showed up, you know, the, the cover had kind of gone bare. Willie Taggart was let go at the end of the year. His son had been the quarterback, one of three guys to take snaps a year ago. This was kind of Thompson's job through the portal. And here is Lewis on second and ten. He's going to be wrestled down. First guy there, Khalil Barnes, who draws the start tonight as the nickelback in replacement of Andrew Makuba, also two. Yeah, Barnes just unblocked, but to kind of get back to Thompson, you're exactly right. I mean, he kind of comes in and is forced to become a leader quickly. And I think that he's done that. He's a unique player in terms of he's able to run, he's a good passer, and he's got a good understanding, a high football IQ. Which is why they've put a lot on his plate. Clemson has held opponents to just eight of their first 29 on third down. That's third best in the ACC. Third down and long. Thompson to throw. Now flushed. And thrown away. Intercepted. Nate Wiggins. And he will score. about surviving one of the initial environment that you're going to feel when you play here. And that is not surviving it. That's just a three-man rush. They get pressure on Thompson. And as he escapes outside the pocket, it just doesn't deliver an accurate throw. And then Wiggins, he's been a very good player. And I think you know, another good corner in this program makes a huge play to start this football game. Gone to try and add the extra point. And the kick is good. And as the old announcer used to say, if they weren't already lathered up and ready to go, they are now. Well, they are now. And like I said, it's just a three-man rush. You got eight guys in coverage. You tell me where you're going with the football. And then you get pressure on the quarterback as well. And you just see Wiggins. He sits in that zone, reads the quarterback, and then good drive on the football, which is inaccurate. As Devin Price was the intended target. And good finish on the play. Good rally of the Clemson defenders blocking for him. Nate Wiggins, who had a long interception return against Carolina in the ACC championship game in Charlotte last year, comes up with his second pick. Career-wise and his first here in 2023. So an early, early blast from the Tigers here. On the fourth snap of the game, too. Quarterback.
back to as many nights as Casey Thompson has, you got to have a short memory here. Wes, that's a great point. That, that's the advantage to being an older player that's played in some big environments before, that's made mistakes before, and knows that you have to respond after a critical error. Yep. So Thompson and the Owls will come back out. And now trailing 7 to nothing behind the effort of Wiggins on the pick six. And that's exactly what defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin needed to start the night, by the way. You know, there's been so much talk, too, about this Clemson offense and what they look like with club neck and what the receivers look like. This defense, Wes, is still a really talented and deep defense. And it's a secondary that's loaded with experienced players. Clemson came into the ball game just above 100 in turnover margin. Remember, they're still reeling from that opening night loss at Duke in that regard, but not now. Lewis will get the carry. He has the best play of the night. Not bad there. Seven yards on first down. Agent zero, Barrett Carter. Carlos Sweeney said one of the best pure football players I have had in 20 years. And that's all you need to say. Well, you think about the players that have come through here. If the game does come easy to him, and then physically, he's just a talented guy, a run and hit linebacker for sure. Yep. Pistol set here for Florida Atlantic. They'll move Lewis to the right of Thompson. You see the double wing look here employed by Charlie Fry. And they go to counter. And they get him to LaJonte Wester. Now this is an explosive youngster, the junior from Palmetto, Florida. Over almost 1,700 yards of uh, total offense in his career. He's the most exciting player for this Owls offense. You just look at the ball handling in the backfield here. Hard to tell, was it a handoff? Was it a little bit of a touch pass? But they're gonna do everything they can to hide Wester and then also find ways to get him the football. First down and 10, out at the 37. Wester got five there. Thompson hands and Kobe Lewis loses a yard on the play. T.J. Parker was the first of the Tigers to arrive, a true freshman from Central High School in uh, Phoenix, Alabama. A good look at Parker. I mean, a young player filling out that uniform. I mean. And it does, doesn't it just feel like defensive linemen in this program just year after year, new guys arriving on campus that can really play? Yep. Playing alongside Aurora Row, who is as talented as it gets in the Clemson front. Second and 11. Thompson going to deep shot for Wester, and he is just overthrown and complete. He had gotten behind the freshman Barnes. Jeremiah Trotter was up in the throwing lane of the quarterback. Yeah, and Wester wins, you know, on the post route. Just gets inside, keeps that speed up. As you can see, as that ball was coming out of Thompson's hand, it was Jeremiah Trotter Jr. putting pressure on the quarterback. Yep. Well, Jonte Wester, you pointed him out during our prep, Tim. He can really run now. I mean, he's as fun of a football player as you'll get to watch just because of his ability to to play with so much speed. Tied into the boundary and three receivers on third and long. Thompson toward the first down stick, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Dimitri Hester. Khalil Barnes was there again for Clemson. And it definitely was a point of emphasis this week for Casey Thompson to have to play on time. And you can just see he's trying to play with anticipation, get the ball out quickly, Seemed a little bit early getting that football out. Here is Logan Lupo, who originally started his career at Louisville. So he's punted in the ACC before. 40 plus yard average in his career. Ball fielded on the fly. Antonio Williams returns right around the 35. Well, we're underway at Death Valley. And already, Nate Wiggins has lit this house up. 7 nothing Tigers. Food for thought is you're going to have bad plays. They happen. You need to avoid the disastrous plays, like this one in the red zone against Duke, just on a mesh read. And, and then how about this one last week when the flat is wide open, top of the screen, you get the football, but you can't do this. Back foot, falling away, 
Come back side. Just one that you know you shouldn't make. And those are the things that just make a coach scratch his head and say, why are we doing this? We know we're better than that. The players know they're better than that, but I think it creates some doubt in terms of where you are as a football team and where you are as an offense. Yeah. Kate Klubnick, this is his first snap of the game. Remember, Wiggins' interception led to the second Florida Atlantic possession. So Clemson offense on the field for the first time of the 21. We had a post scrimmage on sportsmanlike conduct on Clemson. I mean, yes, on Clemson. So that backs the Tigers up to the 21. Antonio Williams makes the catch. And then Jaron Morris, who had a pick six last week against Ohio, makes the hit for the Owls. Here is Will Shipley's first carry of the night. And that'll be a yard or so shy of the first down. Evan Anderson, big number eight in the white, made the stop. There he is. Eight looks like an island on that jersey. Third and a couple. Pistol set for Klubnik. Quick throw. Williams a catch. First down for the Tigers and more. Out to about the 42 and a half goes Antonio Williams. Dabo Sweeney could not say enough about Williams' improvement from freshman to sophomore season yesterday. And he's got such a nice feel. That, that is an RPO, run pass option. And basically, he just finds some space, just finds some grass. And if FAU is going to load the box and try to stop Shipley, there's space in the passing game. Klubnik does a nice job of just spitting it out to him. Three receivers. You got Turner, Collins, and also Brown in the game. And they're going to hand it to Shipley again, and that's Merrifield from Winder, Georgia, not far from where we are tonight, but he's playing for the Owls. Number 50 making the stop yeah. there for Florida Atlanta. He makes the stop because it's big. Evan Anderson in that number eight trying to make him look skinny getting some penetration early in the down empty set here for the Tigers. Klubnik looks. Brenning stool the tight end makes the catch. Jake Brenning stool fifth catch of the year he had three of them last week. Tombs and Hill or Hill rather make him stop. Go back to that play. You see the activity from Evan Anderson. He's listed at 356. Then he's up over 370 at one point. That's pretty good movement for young man his size. We got word he's a former lacrosse player. Pretty big lacrosse player. Here's Clubman. Throws a rope and the catch is made. That's Cole Turner sliding across. The Florida Atlantic 45 yard line. Another Clemson first down. Clemson looks good here early, Tim. He does, and it is an encouraging sign for Clemson when you get receivers other than Antonio Williams and Bo Collins involved in the pass game. Collins bottom of the screen. First and 10 for the Tigers. Clubnick steps up in the pocket. He'll keep it here. Got five, got 10, and slides for another Tiger first down just beyond or inside, I should say, the FAU 35 before Jackson ambush. Great name for a linebacker made the play. And Dabble Sweeney said to us with Clubnick, we need him to do more with his legs. And I think, you know, not just on known passing downs, a lot of times it's just on first down. He does it there, and you can see why Dabo is encouraging that. Here's the two back set now. And here's Shipley working with Maffa in tandem. And a solid run there of about five yards. And to go back to prior play, this is what I mean. They're trying to work an isolation route to Turner. He doesn't like it, and then it's a pretty good job of making guys miss, picking up good yardage on first down, and then it also is something that the secondary has to be aware of. He's an excellent athlete, and I think they want to see more of that. Second and five as we work toward the middle of this first quarter of play. Straight drop for Clubman. Going to launch. Deep ball, end zone, touchdown. Strike to redshirt freshman Tyler Brown. And I think what's really nice about this from Kate Klovnik is the anticipation that he played with there. A little pressure in his face, put enough air on it so Tyler Brown can run underneath it. And 
promising, promising freshman able to do that, keep the speed up for the score. Gun to add the point. Klubnik was perfect on the drive. Five for five, 59 yards, and Gun doinks it off the right upright. So it's a 13-0 ball game. Tim, we get another look here at the throw. Yeah, it's Tyler Brown. He's inside. He's just going to run to the post. And what I mean by Klubnik playing with anticipation, take a look at the pressure in his face. Ball's got to come out early. He does that, throws it right to the post. That's a beautiful job by Kate Klubnik. This Clemson offense is rolling. 13 defense. They got a touchdown to Wiggins pick six. And then now Klubnik hits Brown for a 30 yard score. And Clemson's rolling as we visit with Taylor. Yeah, as great as that drive was for Kate Klubnik, early in the drive, you saw Antonio Williams zero walk off the field. He went straight to the tent. He's been in there ever since. Guys will continue to monitor the situation down here on field level. All right. Thanks, Taylor. Already Makuba and Walker Parks out of the lineup tonight and from a starting perspective of Clemson. Kick through the end zone. Let's check this uh, Antonio Williams play again here, Tim. It's the first play of the game is the ball that just spit right out to him, and it was Drum Morris who drove on him and kind of got up. A little unsure. So, we'll see. Keep an eye on it. Maybe we'll keep us updated. Here is Casey Thompson now with his third possession. All three Florida Atlantic possessions have started from the Owls 25. In motion, that's Posey. Fumble of the football. And I believe FAU. Got back on it at the 21. Thompson, I think, recovered his own missed snap. It looks like they're potentially reading this, or maybe just the inaccurate snap made Thompson late to get the football handed off. And the miscommunication with Posey puts them behind schedule, and this is not how you want to start UFAU. And Antonio Williams is trying to figure out where he is on a scale of 1 to 10. Here's Lewis trying to sweep to the far side, and Maskell, grad student from Snellville, Georgia, was having none of that. Charlie Fry, Tim, who you know from playing in the NFL, he obviously feels like occasionally they can get north and south, but their best their best chance percentage-wise is working the perimeter here in the run game. Yeah, they know that running inside zone against these really talented interior defensive linemen and the way the linebackers play downhill is hard. And so they are going to try to get outside with their speed, but listen, when you find yourself in third and 17, there's not a whole lot on the call sheet. Three-man rush for the Tigers. Thompson hit as he throws. It is caught underneath. That's Wester, and he will cross to the 26, and that'll be that. Jalen Phillips, the stop for Clemson from the secondary, and boy, Casey Thompson got rid of that just in time. Well, he did, and again, you mentioned it was a bit of a screen. It was basically a downfield screen where you throw the little underneath route to Wester. You have the receivers blocked down screen, downfield on the screen, but it's the three-man rush that's getting pressure. That is a bad sign for Florida Atlanta. So it is Carson Kruger who is doing the uh, Carson Kruger who is the punter. And it's a fake. The quarterback, we should have known. And he threw it to the tight end, Zeke Moore. But he did not get the first down. Knocked out of bounds, shy of the 35. So Carson Kruger came in a quarterback and he threw it to a tight end but Tom Herman rolled the dice and busted. And listen I applaud the aggressiveness you have been struggling on offense. How do you steal a possession expend a, you know extend a drive. But because it was you know so much in terms of yards to gain to get the first down. Pretty good effort just doesn't get there. More. Had uh, two catches last week in the loss to Ohio. But couldn't quite get the last step there for Herman. Two back set again for Klubnik. Shipley and Moffa with him. 
Play fake. Klubnik clutches, runs. And he will get about four to the 30, tripped up by Wheeler, who ironically wears number 18 for the Owls, so thus he is the 18 Wheeler. I mean, you you were hoping he had a tackle early. On Tuesday, yeah. I was hoping Let's he would go. have a tackle. First Just time I saw the depth chart. One. Yeah. Let's go. Couldn't wait. And by the way, it just so we're all together on this, he is 6'3", 290 pounds from Bremen, Georgia, so he looks like an 18 wheeler. He does. Second down six, and look at Matha's first carry. Trying to get to the perimeter, and he is collared by Day Day Hill. Now, Tim, when they go this two back set, and in some respect, I know it diminishes what you can do maybe in the throw game a touch, but this is pretty effective. It, it does, but it doesn't. It gives you an opportunity to go seven man protection, also gives you the ability to get those guys into the flat, gives you the ability to do this as well. And so I do think that it is unique. A lot of teams want to do it when they have two backs, but they don't necessarily have guys that are unselfish. You just take a look at what happens here. You know, Mafa's getting the football. But it's Chipley that's also blocking on the play. I think it's the unselfishness of each of these backs to be the guy that's a lead blocker that really makes it unique for Clemson's offense. Moffa sliding inside. And we'll get to about the 14 yard line. So third down coming up, Taylor. I talked to Will Shipley earlier this week and he said you know these two are roommates him and Phil Maffa but he said when he first got to campus he wasn't really sure because of Phil's demeanor if he even liked him that much but he did say now after three years sometimes he still can't tell but they are the best of friends and he says after this lifetime that relationship will continue guys. Mm. They go with just the one back Maffa you see Shipley checks out a couple of tight ends in the set here for Garrett Riley. The new OC for Clemson. Klubnik. Threw it out of the pocket. Did it get deflected? I think so. And might have been Merrifield that got a hand on it. I think it was Phil Maffa that got a hand on it. Watch Maffa. He gets confused in pass protection. So he cut, tries to retrace. Oh. And he's the one that hits his quarterback. Listen, as a running back, you can't sit back and catch. You've got to go attack because you are in the quarterback space when you try to do things like that. 31 yard try for Gunn, who missed on the extra point. On the year he's one for three hit a 23 yarder last week against Charleston Southern. And the kick is pulled left. So Robert Gunn the third has missed an extra point. And Dabo Sweeney knows they are going to be nights where there are premiums on those. Might not be tonight but there could be another night. Meanwhile Tom Herman's team gets a stop of the Tigers on offense. Break, he missed an extra point after Clemson's second touchdown. And the head coach of the Tigers shaking his head, Tim, because he knows there's a premium on those. That ball's intercepted. What a play in traffic. Barnes has come up with a pick in his third ball game as a Tiger. an outbreaking route. Barnes jumps it and yes, we may not have a kicking problem. <laughs> he just continue to get turnovers. Casey Thompson looks like he starts right, which means he's a little bit late coming back to his left. He's not able to follow through again. It's pressure from that defensive line. Ball's left inside and Will Barnes is off to a really good night and he's in the lineup mainly because Andrew Makuba is out with a leg injury. Boy. Phil Moffa in the game with Kate Klubnik. Tigers another plus field start. 34 a moment ago. 26 this time and here is Moffa. That flipped over as he cut through the hole. Pick up a five, Taylor. An update on Antonio Williams. He was down here out of the tent working out on the sideline. Looked like working on his release and running. Uh, but after a couple of tries, they've now taken him back into the locker room, guys. All right, thanks. Second down four after the six yard run by Phil Moffa. After the second turnover of the night on the Owls. Klubnik spins one for Bo Collins. He'll have the first down. Was trying to reroute for more. I think he'll be first and goal right at the 10 on Day Day Hills time. 
tonight. I've been impressed with Cade Klubnik, his just ability to kind of see the field. The ball's going to different players. Hmm. I feel like he's seeing it well. Ball's coming out on time. And, you know, I think one of the things you can do with a receiving core that's kind of developing is play a little bit better at quarterback, and it helps that group. Here's the two back set. Here's Shipley bouncing through the left side. And Anderson grabs a hold of Will Shipley for just a couple of yards. And Bo Collins, regarded as maybe the most physically gifted of Clemson's wide receiver, the junior from Los Angeles. 24th career game tonight, came in just under 1,000 yards receiving and nine touchdowns. But he had to fight to stay on the field injury wise last year, Tim. It was a hard fall campaign a season ago for Collins. Second and goal for the Tigers. There's Bo in motion. Klubnik in zone. Brenning stool. Did he hold on through the catch? He did. Touchdown, Clemson. Said it was a good sign when it's, the ball's been spread around to the receivers. It's also a good sign. Wes, you said it earlier. Three catches last week for Brennan Stool. You get him involved, especially at six foot six down in the red zone. You see his strength to go up and be a hand catcher above his head. And that's a nice job. Good ball placement by Kate Klubnik and Clemson offense looking sharp. Guns point after good. Tigers have taken both Thompson interceptions now for turn for touchdowns. First one was run back to the house by Wiggins, and the one a moment ago by Barnes cashed in on Klubnik's second TD pass of the night. I believe that's another run pass option. I think they're reading those linebackers playing downhill as Moffa's a bit downfield blocking as if it's a lead play and Klubnik. Face mask or higher in the back of the end zone on throws like that, that's perfect. Tom Herman's team now has got to go find a, a little bit of a drive here, Tim. You're giving it to Clemson in plus territory in the last two possessions. If you're lucky they missed the field goal in one regard, but they weren't going to miss that one. Yeah, and you, you know, you get away with not making it on the fake punt, but the de your defense to be out there defending short fields and get demoralizing. The offense needs to do something. Get a first down, try to get something at a minimum, flip the field, West, to your point about defending from your own end. End over end kick, Florida Atlantic will scrimmage for the fifth time in this first quarter off its 25 yard line. Don't forget Tuesday night on ACC Network. Well, I'm excited about this. We're number one. The documentary series continues the 1999. Florida State Seminoles. It premieres Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern on ACC Network. More than 20 team members, opposing players, and head coaches were interviewed for this documentary. My goodness, what a squad that was for Bobby Bowden and the Knowles. Mike Norvell's Knowles held on today at Chestnut Hill. More on that coming up at the break with our friends from the huddle. We got a flag here. Ball start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. It's still first down. Tim Hedgepeth, the referee tonight. Dorian Hinton, a transfer from Middle Tennessee State. Guilty there. Look, playing this defense is hard enough as it is. You get negative plays, get behind the down and distance. It makes it really tough sledding. So here is Casey Thompson, two of his first seven. 13 yards and two interceptions. Lewis trying to get to the corner. Not much there, maybe a yard. Sheridan Jones was the first Tiger there. The Owls are playing tonight without Larry McCammon the third, the senior from Birmingham, who was arguably their leading rusher and most talented running back. Lewis, who transferred from Purdue, Originally started his career at Central Michigan. It is tonight's feature back for Charlie Fry's offense. That's Wester in the orbit. 
Out on the perimeter, here is the catch by Lewis. There's a flag down, and Kobe Lewis races across the 30. If it stands, it'll be third and short. Did they early release a lineman here, Tim? Well, it was a screen. I think that ball is completed behind the line of scrimmage, which would be fine. Holding. Offense number 78. Mm. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Tough drive for Dorian Hinton. Well, I think it's a two-way screen where they've got Wester on the flare screen, but Clemson aggressively attacked it, and so they throw the screen the other way to Lewis, and you're right. It's Hinton with another penalty, and now you're way off schedule. Yep. Second and 25. The new sequence here for the Owls in the final half minute of quarter one. Lewis flares to the field side. Long throw, makes the catch, gets by the first Tiger. Slid right by Jaden Lucas. And that'll still be well short. Third along again. There's a look at Lucas. I mean, the challenge that. Charlie Fry is dealing with. He's trying to stretch the field at the same time. Trying to protect his quarterback. Quarter in the books at Tiger Town. Clemson in front. This is AG1. We start quarter two with third and long for Thompson, who is flush from the pocket straight up the field. And he will slide down before reaching the first down mark. Around the 23, and Barnes, who had the second of Thompson's two interceptions, helps out on the tackle cover. Barnes has been all over the place. I've been impressed with Barnes so far. I mean, he just did a good job setting the edge in the run game a few times, did a nice job playing in space, and pretty good start for the young freshman. Ham Green and Tyler Brown are deep for Clemson. You don't often see the double safety in the punt return look, but we do here. Second snap of the second quarter. And Brown, on a late fair catch call, does so right around the 37-yard line. Okay, 20 to nothing. The coach seemed pretty pleased with the opening 15 minutes, and rightly so, Tim. I mean, Klubnik's been sharp. Kicking game a little bulky. Two positive plays defensively in the interceptions. He was he was pleased because he didn't talk about the, the missed kick, but I agree. I mean, look, your defense starts the game off with an interception run back for a score. Quarterback's making good decisions. And then his final point, talking to Taylor, was, and he's made some plays with his legs. I think they feel like if K. Klubnik will just take off and run on early downs, Keep them on schedule with the way they run the football. That will help them just avoid some of the mistakes offensively, offensively that they've run into. He's eight of his first nine for 76 yards. And straight ahead goes Shipley. Keeps his balance midfield into a stack at the 45. And forward goes Shipley. Pretty strong run into Owl territory on the first down play. 23-yard run for Shipley. And I think runs like that are why they really like Shipley. Like, yes, he's got some shiftiness, but that balance and toughness through the hole, impressive. A little out and up. Now Klubnik back to his left. There's a flag down. He's going to run here for the near side. He's flushed to the... Clemson bench by Gerald's the linebacker might be a hold. We'll hear with Hedge Beth. Holding offense number 71. 10 yard penalty. First down. Tristan Lee, the left tackle. There's the big sophomore from Northern Virginia. So the penalty on the Tigers and back to the Shipley run. Good job keeping his balance and then that spin comes down on that right shoulder. Pretty hard. Looks like he's okay right now, but definitely seemed somewhat affected by it when he originally got up. Shipley in the backfield, a two by two look here on first and long. Plumnick to Shipley again. Blockers in front. And boy, took a big lick on the back end that time. That was Smoke Mungin, the senior from Tampa. And Gerald's again, the linebacker. Yeah, and then another. Pretty good contact on Shipley. It's a great adjustment to the football, but the shot he takes at the end of this. And to be honest with you, they may take a look at that one. Crowd, as you can tell on the video boards here at Clemson at the east end of the stadium. Not thrilled that uh, there's not another look coming from referee Hedgepeth. 
Second down. Klubnik back across the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. McClendon made the stop on the hit against Stellato. That's Troy Stellato, who emerged last week, five catches and 51 yards for the Tigers. Now Moffa comes in on third and long. Yeah, and this is a good example of third and 13. Cade Klubnik, be smart. You're up 20 to nothing. Understand the situation with how you know risky you are with the football. Steals a look back to the Clemson bench. That's where Garrett Riley sends the signals to him. He'll take the shot. Randall's wide open. Busted coverage by the Owls. And Adam Randall makes Florida Atlantic pay. Well, he sees it. They bring a pressure from Klubnik's right. It's a corner pressure with another linebacker level player coming. And because of that, they rotate the coverage, which is why he's able to hit Randall for the big pickup. Tigers right on the football, and here's Moffa to work on the right side. Around the corner goes the big fella. Touchdown. You can see how tempo can help you get to big plays. Big third down conversion on the shot to Randall. Hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Maybe catch the defense not aligned properly. When you do that and you have guys blocking down the field, it allows for the big Phil Moffa touchdown run. Five plays, 63 yards inside two minutes. Moffa's got his third rushing score of the year. Man, Garrett Riley's pushing it up the gearbox here in the first half, Tim. He sure is, and the quarterback seeing it, which helps that happen. Hits Randall up the sideline for the big pickup, and then it's Phil Moffa and the big guys doing work as Clemson is rolling. It's bow time. Okay, Klubnik, he's got a community pass game going tonight. Spreading the football around, seven different receivers usually means the quarterback is seeing things well, throwing the ball where the defense is dictating it to go, and that number could grow drastically tonight in terms of guys that catch passes tonight to Clemson. Lewis going to bring it out. Tigers kind of slowed their roll a little bit, and across the 25 goes Kobe Lewis, and that's where the Owls will get cranked up. Don't forget, after we're done tonight, Kelsey Riggs and the ACC huddle, full post game. It's been a busy, Saturday in the Atlantic Coast Conference highlights analysis interviews and more they'll cover it all right here tonight from Frank Howard Field at Memorial Stadium ACC huddle post game following our coverage of Clemson looks like they got a festival of folks up there on the party deck at the huddle Play an autograph line for Eric McClain oh man I want to tell you now it's a thing when Emacs here Off the 27, Thompson to the far side. Catch is made, Jay Sean Platt, ball loose. Barnes has got another one. And Barnes returns it back inside the five to the four. I just want to name him ACC Defensive Player of the Week right now. This is an unbelievable play. He gets, he meets the ball carrier. Let's see if he's in bounds when he grabs his football because they're on the sidelines. Three minutes into the Khalil Barnes returns to the Florida Atlantic four. And the Clemson defense is out on the field here because of this. Barnes rips it out and then see the ball hit the white and then roll back in. Barnes does reestablish himself if the ball doesn't hit the white, Tim. The rock is live. Yeah, it's the ball hitting out of bounds that is going to keep this ball in the possession of the Owls. And Khalil Barnes looking like Brian Dawkins out there. Good oh, voice. I mean, you think about the plays that, nice. that he has made. Review, the ball was fumbled backward and out of bounds. It'll be second down for FAU.
Yeah, Zaberry Mobley is coming into the ball game, by the way, in the running back spot as Tom Herman's team avoids their third turnover this first half. That's Mobley in the barrel of the pistol with Thompson. Thompson looking for the throw. Oh, my goodness. LaJonte Wester wide open. First down out near the 48 yard line of the Owls. Jalen Phillips makes the stop. Wester wide open in 19 yards. Wide open, and they're moving Wester around in the slot there. And that's what Charlie Fry talked to us about. It's just doing different things, so it's hard to find where he is, hard to double him. And if you leave him one on one, most likely he will get open. Longest play of the night for the Owls. And this is Mobley trying to turn the corner. He'll crash over midfield into Clemson territory. Go the Owls. FAU's first trip across the midfield line with four minutes gone in the second quarter. And all Clemson since the fourth snap of the game. And Nate Wiggins picked Casey Thompson and ran it back 46 yards for a touchdown. Quick throw. That's the tight end Moore. The freshman from Roswell, Georgia. Making the catch, and there's another first down for FAU. That's a nice job by Casey Thompson because what's happening is it's basically you check, we check. Clemson checking when they see FAU checking, and Thompson basically having to come off of where he originally wanted to go with the football. Tigers looking back toward defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin. And Thompson looks across the way to where Charlie Fry and that offensive unit are calling the plays. Here's Thompson in the pocket. Got away from the first guy, the second guy, but will not get away from Parker. T.J. Parker brings Thompson down right at the 40. Yeah, well, Parker, good-looking kid. Yeah, now. yeah, and, and listen, get, get into the quarterback without bringing pressure. Like when you can do that, it just opens up so many opportunities for you in the secondary to try to create confusion. Second and ten. Mobley out of the backfield. Here's Thompson again. Spins it for Wester. And Woodas makes the tackle on a five-yard gain by Lajante Wester. Here's Wade Woodas. This feels like these linebackers for Clemson can really run, huh? Woodas flying to the football. Yep. Trotter flying to the football. We talked about Bear Carter earlier doing a similar thing. They put Parker and Peter Woods to the bottom of the screen here on that front for Clemson. Two of their young stars for third down. Tigers bringing for Thompson hit as he throws incomplete and a flag will be thrown on the hit. Cave Denoff. Rough in the pass there. Defense number 44, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Casey Thompson's hurt on the play. The flag for the late hit is on Cade Denoff for the Tigers back in a moment. And that's a tough sight for Florida Atlantic. That's Casey Thompson, of course, who their starter tonight, the senior from Oklahoma City, coming out of the ball game after a hit a moment ago against Cade Denoff. The Clemson defensive end. And Tom Herman's got to bring Daniel Richardson in the game from Carroll City in the Miami area and a transfer from Central Michigan at the quarterback spot. 5'10, 205 pound junior with a couple of years left to go. So here is Richardson in a play fake. And he will throw, but caught out of bounds. And that is Moore again, the tight end, who was the intended receiver. Another look at the Thompson injury on the Denoff hit. Well, it's clearly rough in the pass, or he's up high on Casey Thompson. And then immediately as he goes down, he grabs that right knee. And what's interesting is you don't really see any contact to that right knee, but clearly he knew right away something was wrong. 
second in the full ten, but right on the edge of the Tiger red zone is Florida Atlantic on their best drive of the night. Richardson under duress, and he'll be sacked, and that's Parker again. T.J. Parker is having a night. He's just going to loop inside and basically comes unblocked. And a lot of times you're out of control as a defensive lineman. You don't make the play, but it's a good job of getting Richardson to the ground by T.J. Parker. Yep. So the Tiger reserves behind that front 11 is starting to make a little noise here. Third and long, 19 to a first down for the Owls. Richardson on the release and incomplete intended for Lewis who had kind of come out of the backfield and was wide open but underthrown and here comes Lupo I guess to kick we've been told that Logan Lupo is wearing number 16 tonight and sure enough that is what's happened. So Logan Lupo, who started his career at Louisville, in fact, his career best is 55 yards at Pitt in 2020. This is 47. It would be his best as an owl. And it is no good. He pushed it left. So the missed field goal of 47 yards ends the drive for Herman's Owls. Check with Taylor after the injury to Casey Thompson. Yeah, guys, he's still down here in the tent on the sideline. And when he walked off, you could audibly hear just how upset he was. I talked to him this week, and he had shoulder surgery back in December, was rehabbing three times a day, six times a week. And he told me he was really proud of himself when he got back on the field during fall camp. So just tough to see any player go down with an injury. We'll keep you posted. Well, anything long term here would be a tough blow for the Owls. Here's Shipley trying to get a couple of yards. Clemson starts from its 29. Toombs edged him out. And that's because of the relationship he has with Charlie Fry established among other things. Too. Yeah, and I think, listen, it's a tough game. And Casey Thompson on his third school, we documented how he's older than you know, nine quarterbacks that are playing in the National Football League. He was a really highly re rated recruit coming out of high school. And it's just been a tough road. And obviously, not being able to stay healthy, part of the equation. Flubnik in the gun. Here comes the rush across the middle. Thrown behind Williams and then caught by Randall. I think this might be Klubnik to Williams to Randall. Yeah, not exactly the route distribution you're looking for to have two receivers in the same area, but when it's your night, it's your night. Because two in the same area, tip ball is usually bad for the offense, not there. Double play combination gets the Tigers a first down, and there's Williams with a sliding grab. So good to see Antonio Williams come back. Yeah, this is what I mean about the route distribution. You essentially have two receivers running into the same area, and so it's Williams tipping the football. Tip footballs in the middle of the field usually are disastrous, but I guess if you've got a backup in Randall, then it's not. Shipley and Maffa together. You see Antonio Williams, who's returned. Florida Atlantic brings in some fresh guys on their defensive front. And here is Shipley out of that two back look. And the last owl was Morris, who got a hand in there to trip him up. Transfer from Texas State. Real playmaker in the back end for Rock Bellatoni, the defensive coordinator of these owls. You get the sense a little bit, Wes, that there's kind of been a little bit of everything from this Clemson offense. Yeah. You know, it's not just been one thing. And I and I think that's when we talk about Dabo being encouraged by some of the stuff he's seen, it's because we've run the football well at times, and the quarterbacks made good decisions at times, and he's used his legs at times. And I think that is why there's encouragement. Klubnik looping one toward the end zone, and there'll be a flag thrown on a ball intended for. Cole Turner, I believe. And it's Day Day Hill who was in coverage and Passer Turner shaking up. Defense number six, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. 
So the young man from the Birmingham area, Cole Turner. Kind of looks, he does get interfered with, but it also looks like comes up lame and he's hurt and yeah. listen that that you know part of the discussion on these receivers look it's been Bo Collins you talked about it Cole Turner for sure Troy Stilato Adam Randall all of these guys have their development has been stunted because of injuries yeah play fake plugged it far side and Bo Collins tried to turn before it arrived and and complete third and the full ten for Clemson coming up. But, and Tim, here's the thing: you're also the embarrassment of riches you had at wide receiver, you know, for a period here, right? I mean, the Justin Rosses, the T. Higgins, Sammy Watkins, New Hopkins. We could go on and on yeah, here. And, and look, and even guys that on a rip you know, you think yeah, about. Oh, for sure, Mari Rogers. Even, but yeah. then even the guys that didn't pan out, like Joseph Ngata, or you know, players like that that you, know, you thought were the next Sammy Watkins. Klubnik will tuck, run here. He's got the first, he's got the more, and stopped at the two. Now I'm going to ask you as a quarterback, is this a play that maybe two weeks ago he tries to pull the trigger? Well, yeah, I, I think for sure. And I think we've seen him get into bad decision making at, that, at those times. And that's a great decision and a great play. Straight ahead, Shipley toward the goal line. You know what else too, which is a different element than DJ Uyunglo like He wasn't fast. Now he was a strong runner, there DJ was. was. But he wasn't a fast runner. I think there's an element of an explosiveness from the quarterback position as a runner. I think he's faster. I think they feel more Deshaun Watson when he take off and run. Pistol with Shipley here. See the two tight look to the right. There goes Will Shipley. And just short again, so third and goal will be the next snap. Latrell Jean, former Lakeland Dreadnought, from over on the Gulf Coast of Florida, makes the stop. And his 37th career game tonight for the Owls. Third and goal. Klubnik will just push it across. And boy, they're still scrambling. Officials are coming into the melee there at the goal line. And now the touchdown awarded to Kate Klubnik. First rushing score of the year for the young man from Austin, Texas. Sometimes nice to get the reward when you have the big scramble in the red zone. And another example, I think, of this Clemson offense. Doing something different, having success with it, being physical down inside the one yard line with a quarterback sneak. It's good to see your group do that. Nine play drive inside four minutes. And the Tigers try to make it 34 to nothing. And the kick by gun is good. Lane as well. We'll have the whole crew with us for the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. ACC made a statement so far, 5-1 and one in non-conference. How about the Tigers in the statement they're making in the first yeah, half? Yeah, Kelsey Riggs, this defense is hitting, getting that ball out, scoring on defense. You love to see it. Wes and Tim, we'll see you in a few. All right. You can clearly tell that old 78 is back in his familiar environment tonight, Tim. Golly, I mean... <laughs> Greatest day of his life, I heard him say before. I mean, he's married, has children. Yes. And like in that, it's the greatest day of his life. Here we go. Coming up at the half. And ball will be for the Owls at the 25. So a moment ago, Klubnik scores on the one-yard plunge. But it's the third down play and a little post scrimmage here. You see Shipley taken down just outside the goal line. And then a look back to the bench and something isn't quite right with the star back of the Tigers and then he and CJ Spiller in a fairly animated conversation CJ not looking like he wants to back down from that conversation and Shipley 
towel over his head right now. Yep. So with 3.25 to go, we'll see if Clemson gets it back before the half. This is Lewis trying to sneak around the edge, and Peter Woods makes the tackle. Talented freshman from Alabaster, Alabama, wears number 11. Boy, he's good looking too. It's 6'2, 315, and Wes Goodwin really talked about his development with us yesterday. And there's Carter wrapping up Lewis before he reaches the first down. So third and short will be next for Florida Atlanta. Been a hard half for Tom Herman's team. They got 85 yards of offense. Quick snap. Richardson looks, puts it up, and well overthrown. Koval was in coverage of Tony Johnson. Sherrod Koval, sophomore from Chesapeake, Sheridan Jones was there for the Tigers as well. And Jones is in pretty good coverage, but Johnson, I feel like, either doesn't see the football, just stops running, and listen, third and one, you're going to take a shot. Like, you got to try to do anything, try to fight for the football, draw a flag, do anything like that, and it's a quick three and out for his Owl offense. You mentioned Tom Herman's offense struggling. I mean, he felt like last week was his worst game on offense since 1998, and tonight is not going any better. Wobbly kick. Haynes signals for and makes the fair catch. That's a freshman for the Tigers. 41 yard punt. Let's go uh, take you around the league. We started Chestnut Hills. A noon start today. Boston College leading 10 to 3. Jordan Travis and boy, Jaheim Bell starting to become a factor now for the Knowles. They've been a real factor, but there was definitely some fight back from Boston College. 18 penalties. By BC probably prevent them from winning that football game. And Florida State escapes because of it. Ball at the 25 now for the Tigers, who have all three timeouts and 235 to go. And there's Casey Thompson on his way to the locker room for FAU. We saw Richardson clean up that last possession. This is Brenning Stool, another catch by the tight end. He'll squeeze off a half dozen yards ahead of Toombs there. Klubnik just continues to have a very, very nice half. 13 of 16 now for almost 150 yards. He's rushed for one and thrown for two. Yeah, and just the distribution of the football. I know we touched on it earlier, but there's Brenningstool again. Just an easy little quick out. Spit the football out to him. Read option and Tim, let's go back here because that's a play that maybe got him a little bit on opening night. That time he knew to pull it and get on the ground because the play was a bust. Yeah, bust. FAU. Their first of the half. Please set the game clock to two minutes, six seconds. 206. Latrell Jean blew that play up for Florida Atlantic. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon on ACC Network. Sundays is Ladies' Day. We'll start with volleyball at noon. Coastal Carolina meets the Tar Heels at Carmichael Arena. Then we move over to soccer over in Raleigh, Pittsburgh at NC State, and then finish up with more volleyball, four o'clock from Chestnut Hill with Merrimack at BC. There's a look at Will Shipley on the Tiger bench. Maffa on the field here for third down and seven after Florida Atlantic used one of their three timeouts here. Clemson is four for five on third down tonight. Klubnik back foot launching and well overthrown. Bo Collins was the intended receiver. Michael Antone was the uh, corner in coverage. It, it may sound funny, but like a play like that, after some of the things that happened a week ago, when we talked about the disastrous plays, mm. situation of the game, understanding where you are, protection gets blitzed, don't need to take a risk with the football. Like in some ways, that, that shows development and growth and awareness of playing the position. Aiden Swanson will punt it away for the Tigers. Now LeJonte Wester is the punt returner and a good one for Florida Atlantic. But he'll signal for a fair catch and do so at the Owls 31 yard line. Tim the ability as you grow as a quarterback. Don't make the bad plays you said earlier. Don't make the bad play the disastrous play. And if you're Kate Klubnik. Oh by the way it's still just your fourth college start tonight. Yeah that's a great point. I think because we've seen him here for a little while now we probably think he's played a little bit more football than he's had than he has. 
but the reality is, is like yeah you do need to make some mistakes to learn from them you do need to find yourself when something bad happens because somebody else makes a mistake don't make it worse and and that, that's something you learn the more snaps you play final 153 of the first Richardson replacing the injured Casey Thompson long throw for Lewis and got away from one tackle and will get toward a first down ripped right through Koval and got nine yards on the play you know Wes one of the things you do as a young quarterback to kind of finish up on Klubnik sometimes when a guy runs the wrong route it stuns you and then you throw him the football like one of the worst things you can do as a quarterback is reward a guy by throwing him the ball when he runs the wrong route like little things like that I think are part of the development sound like we just hit a personal nerve maybe, yeah, I mean, back it, in the day it hit a little bit. Richardson had pressure from Trotter the ball popped out it's been scooped up by Avion Terrell the younger brother of the former Tiger star AJ Terrell but I think this was incomplete anyway but well you got to know where 5-4 is don't you yeah I mean look at Trotter come flying through there and you mentioned it it's Terrell who gets off the ground and, and bats that football down there may may have been some space behind him if he's not able to do that but with some of these pressures that Wes Goodwin is bringing that are overload pressures secondary player and a linebacker that time it was Trotter and Terrell third and short and they're going to hand the ball to Lewis he will fly through the ball came out but I believe Lewis was down Koval again involved in the collision so Davo Sweeney calls a timeout here. Well, and it may allow for some time, time for this out. to be looked at because he's up in the air and the first the 30 seconds. It's going to be interesting if part of that elbow is down because the arm is definitely on the back of Morangas, the, the center. But does the point of his elbow touch the ground is the question. Why is it a charge timeout? The play went under further review. It's there is no timeout. To me, I think the point of that elbow actually does touch the grass before that ball comes loose. Yeah, I think you're right. But it's close. And with it being called down on the field, I can't, I can't imagine that this gets overturned, but it was not as clear as it looked live. Yeah. Moranis, the center from Puerto Rico trying to keep Trotter out of the fray and boy this is close but it'll be a first down if the play stands now I think he's got a possession of the football elbows on the ground now comes out yep well in in the review And we can see this a couple different ways, but right there, if you frame it together with the other angle, the elbow's on the ground. Based on the one we saw Correct. from behind the rock. Yeah, I think that elbow is definitely on the ground. And you know, we'll be interested with first down. I'm, I'm assuming FAU is going to try to go fast. So, you know, Clemson uses their timeout. They get that timeout back because of the review. So the clock should start once they put it in play. Right. And you would think that FAU is on the ball ready to go with After further review, the ruling when the field stands, first down. Partisans here, of course, have a vested interest in the result just, and not happy. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now the timeout will be taken by Clemson on the first down. Because like you, Tim, I think Dabo Sweeney realized the Owls were going to go fast here. Yeah. And Tom Herman's team still under 100 yards of offense in this first half. Yeah. Look, I don't think it's necessarily a big deal that Dabble used that timeout, but I would say that there's part of me that, that would not have wanted to use it. That ball was going to be snapped quickly. You didn't complete pass here. Mm -hmm. You're still in business to potentially getting this football back if you dabble, which I think is why he was originally looking to take the timeout in the first place. There's Wes Goodwin in the purple signaling the defensive plays in. 
He's from Southwest Alabama. He's from Grove Hill. About a half hour from Barlow Bend, where Frank Howard hailed. There's a back throw on the backside. The catch is made. That's Sullivan, another one of the tight ends in the fray for the Owls. This is an awesome play by Barrett Carter. It's a little tight end and a sneak throwback. You're basically trying to, to fool the defense with that jet sweep, and Bear Carter not fooled by it and is able to, to be right there to make the play. Tim, let's spend a minute here. We have talked about the front tonight in the opening 30 because we've seen T.J. Parker. We've seen Peter Woods. Uh, we've seen Maskell make plays. We know Aurora Row can play. Tyler Davis we know is a player. But these linebackers, Woodass, Trotter, Carter, have all delivered in the opening half as you would expect. They're playing to the level you expected them to play at in August. Yeah, I feel like, look, as long as, you know, I've been doing games at Clemson, I mean, we're talking four years now, I feel like they've had a dominant front, meaning linebackers and defensive linemen. It's been dominant, and they've played like it again tonight. Here's Richardson, quick throw on the perimeter and blasted was Tony Johnson, the receiver, shy of the first down, and that's Nate Wiggins who opened the scoring tonight with a pick six. Yeah, it's a good job driving on the football. Keeps them in bounds and Dabble quick to call that next timeout. Yep. So Clemson is now out of timeouts. Pretty good lick here by Wiggins. Yeah, just you know, an outbreaking route, vision inside to the outbreaking route by Wiggins and then good leverage on the tackle to Keep Johnson in bounds and you know, Clemson may get this football back. Don't forget Tuesday night, the series We're Number One returns on ACC Network. The newest installation, the 1999 undefeated Florida State Seminole special premiere Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern on ACC Network. Should be just terrific. If you've seen the one on Georgia Tech, there's been a one on Virginia, and now Florida State joins the cast of We're Number One. Third down, 121 to play. Clemson out of timeouts. Richardson sacked. Jalen Phillips on the safety blitz. And they just time it up perfectly. There's an alley for Phillips to run through. You're going to watch what happens. You see the mug look by the linebackers walked up in there. And then Phillips is just able to, to get free. And I think it's a bust by the right tackle, Kamar Bell. And, because of that, Clemson's getting another chance to tack some more points on the board. Kelly had been deep to take the punt. Tom Herman going to call a timeout here. Burns as much clock as he can, 35 seconds left. Forget the Tigers will get the ball to start the second half here as well. And how about our New York Life Drive recap? I think one of the best plays of the night was into this blitz pressure. Big club Nick seeing it hitting Adam Randall and then immediately up to the football. Basically, quick snap, Phil Moffa runs it in for the score. And the drive re recap, it was a quick drive, it was a quick strike. and. Two very different things, but very productive by this Clemson offense. Five plays, 63 yards inside of two minutes. Klubnik has added a one-yard plunge a couple minutes ago, and it's 34 to nothing in favor of the home team. Lupo set to punt it away. Well, we've had a lot of things happen here in the last minute and change. Now Kelly going to run off from this and Lupo's punt is going to reach the end zone. And I say that Tim to say Dabo Sweeney's used a lot of timeouts and so forth to not maybe do something here. Let's check with Taylor before the Clemson snap. Yeah we reported earlier that Antonio Williams had gone back to the locker room. Good to see him back out here but now it's Cole Turner the other wide receiver that has headed back early and he's a guy that Dabo told us they really need to get going. He believes he told me is the fastest guy on the team can take the top off of defenses. So we'll keep an eye on Cole Turner's status moving forward, guys. Thanks, Taylor. 
Turner might be a soft tissue injury of some sort, that, at least, and that's speculation at best, just based on the way he was walking. But it did not look good. And it did not look like a guy that is maybe going to return. Shipley on the handoff, and Antoine gets there to make the stop from the secondary, and there's no stop in this clock, so that'll be the final play of the first half. It started on the fourth snap tonight for the Tigers. Casey Thompson threw an interception that Nate Wiggins ran back from a score. It was 7-0 Clemson, and to be honest with you, Dabo Sweeney's got to be pretty pleased about this first 30 minutes offensively. Well, and you look at the balance, they've obviously run the football well. Found their way into the end zone. Will Shipley waits on the kick from the Owls, and away we go with half number two here from Frank Howard Field. Tigers will get it at the 25, and here's Taylor Tannenbaum. I asked Davo Sweeney simply, hey, what did you think of that 30 minutes of football? He said, that's what Clemson football is supposed to look like. Two complete quarters of football in all three phases. He even joked with me. He said, hey, we may win the turnover margin today after last two games. He said, now you'll start to see the backups trickle in. He wants to see no drop off like last week when it comes to the twos and the threes. And as for the FAU side of things, no status update on quarterback Casey Thompson. We'll see if he returns to the field after he left with what looked like a pretty gruesome leg injury, guys. All right, so here are the ones in terms of the offensive set for the Tigers. Kate Klubnick, the quarterback, Phil Moffa, the running back. Two receivers in the set for the Tigers off their 25. Klubnick. Right across the middle, there's Maffa, and he is pushed back after a couple by the linebacker, Jackson Ambush. I mean, you just can't. I mean, they got 18 Wheeler, and they got Jackson Ambush. It's I a mean, good name team. And Ambush, a good player. The coaches were excited about his opportunity to play in this environment. Transfer from Albany, who they just feel like has, has done everything right. Second down and eight. Here is Maffa trying to dig out against the Owls and maybe got a yard to the 28. That's about it. So Dabo Sweet Taylor said did not want to see drop off. Well, let me tell you this third and long isn't exactly what he was looking for. Uh, not what he was looking for. And, you know, I think part of it is just like the, the mental toughness, the mental ability to, to just refocus an environment like that when you're going to half up 34 nothing. Tigers are four of six on third down. Pressure coming from the Owls. Here's Klubnik to his right, throws it back and underthrows the intended receiver, Myrtle Beach's Adam Randall. It was Jaden Williams, the nickel, who had kind of pressured Klubnik on the throw. Yeah, and that's not the start you want. And really, that's a play you'd like to see Klubnik make. Klubnik make. Not an easy play. You're escaping to your right, you're running full speed, and you're trying to throw a shallow cross accurately so the receiver can keep his speed up and run for the first down. And, just not able to get it to him. Lejante Wester waits on the punt of Aiden Swanson. Grad student from Tampa. Clemson, by the way, offensively, two straight three and outs. And there's Swanson punt, a good one. It'll chase Wester to the far side, and the ball will head out of bounds near the 30 yard line. Well, the Tigers, you know, it's always big when Clemson plays at home, but the last 24 hours. Here at Death Valley, been dominated by Mark Wahlberg, who's here for Parents Weekend, Family Weekend on the Clemson campus. As a daughter who's in school here, this guy's been everywhere. Tim, weight room yesterday with the Tigers. How many parents do you think come in on Parents Weekend, get in the weight room and lose their shirt? <laughs> a lot? I mean, Mark Wahlberg and Eric McLean both using the weight room here this weekend at Clemson. Now, McLean's, I mean, he's in the captain's walk. Wahlberg, kind of over the top service on the family weekend, to be honest with you. By the way, he was at, I mean, the man knows where to go. He was at Rick Irwin's last night, so he knows where to go to get something to eat. And he's been all open at Study Hall for a visit. He was out socializing. Go ahead, man. Boston guy. Figure it out. Oh, here we go there. That's what we were hoping for. <laughs> we started rolling the Boston video and all the guys hey, from hey, the Commonwealth hey. started checking in. Huh? <laughs> here is Richardson in relief of Thompson who is shaken up and he throws it over the head of the tight end Zeke Moore incomplete. And that was Maskell again seven in the orange. 
pressuring Daniel Richardson. You know, what's interesting about what we've seen tonight from this Clemson defensive line is that the guys up front for FAU are big. Many of them played a, a decent amount of football. I think they're a pretty good group up front, but the defensive line for Clemson has just been too much. So third down and 11 for the Owls, who are one of eight tonight. And came into the ball game eight of 24. Richardson almost threw a pick to Rook Aroro. And if Rook gets it, it's going to be a show going to the end zone. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone was going to get him down. And I think you were going to like talking about a big man touchdown, but screen wasn't there. And it's just another play by this Clemson defensive line. Yep. So three and out for the Owls. Tyler Brown waiting on the punt of Logan Lupo. And Lupo, wobbly kick, relatively short. It's going to hit around the 42, take a Tiger bounce back across midfield, and the Owls got to down it, and they finally do, but it's in plus territory for the Tigers. Second Clemson possession in the third. In the secondary, well, how about the most experienced guy in the secondary? Fourth snap of the game. A pick six for Nate Wiggins. Bad decision by Casey Thompson and Wiggins was there and he hit it running and a little bit of a Lambo leap. Back to back games with a defensive touchdown. Wade Wood has, by the way, had a pick six against Charleston Southern last week. Gabe Gardenia's Buccaneers, who were here, and Clemson put 66 on the board. They got 34, and here's their second possession, plus territory after just a 17 yard punt. Klubnik trying to get Brenning stool again. And another play by J. Ron Morris. Transfer from Texas State. He's a pretty good player, Tim. Had the pick six last yeah. week. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, he's kind of been all over the place and you know, not a ton of bright spots, obviously, for the Owls, but does a good job driving on that football. Smart with the offhand. 53rd career game tonight for Morris, who hails from Orange, Texas. Texas State's the old Texas San Marcos. Down at Sunbelt Conference that Florida Atlantic has recently left. Klubnik will throw that up out of bounds. And pressured by Latrell Jean. And there is Casey Thompson, the nearly 25 year old quarterback of the Owls, who left this game in the second quarter with what we think was some sort of knee injury. But good to see him walking because he was hobbling when he left. Yeah, great to see him not on crutches. Obviously, as he comes back and you know, not not the night he envisioned. I'm I'm sure. Tom Herman, his team trying to force Clemson to another three and out. Clubnik flushed again, tried to shoot it to Mafa and almost threw it away. Stepping in front, Eddie Williams, a linebacker. Senior from Miami. And another three and out it is for the Tigers on offense. Yeah, and a, a dangerous throw here. And it was probably gets away with a bit of a tug on the back of Moffa's jersey to catapult him underneath there. But nearly a disastrous play like some of the ones we've talked about throughout the night. So Wester will wait on the punt of Swanson here. End over in. West are going to run out from underneath this. It will hit. And the Tigers could not make the save, I don't believe. The ball on the save attempt hit in the end zone. When we come back, tonight's edition of Westopedia from Frank Howard Field. Oh, the old coach's name. Went on to play four times in the 60s. Alabama won all of them, Tim, from 66 to 69. <laughs> and Bear outscored Frank 98 to 37. <laughs> it feels a little lopsided. From Barlow Bend, Alabama, there was nobody like Frank Howard. You saw the picture. He used to sit in a chair, split the 50-yard line with his Argyle socks. 
Had his hat on, shirt and tie. Oh my goodness. I don't hate that move, sitting in the chair, coaching the game. Did you ever have a coach sit in the chair? No. I don't think so. Second down and six. And the run from Zaberry Mobley gets a yard, so third down coming up. He is a legendary figure. Dabo Sweeney finds himself within three wins of tying Frank Howard. Well, listen, anytime you're three wins away from somebody who's with their name in the stadium, yep. means you've done a pretty good job. Yep. Dabo staring at 163 tonight. Third down. Richardson going to put it up for grabs down the near sideline. Pretty good coverage. Toriano Pride, the sophomore from St. Louis, was right there with Tony Johnson, the intended receiver for Florida Atlantic. And who Pride sitting down like he might have. Hey, what we've seen, and I don't know that that's what happened to Toriano. Tim, how many guys have we seen land this year, and it's like a shoulder or an arm or something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean clearly, you know, going to the ground and how you go to the ground obviously can lead to some of those those injuries and I feel like we've kind of seen a number of them even tonight. Hmm. So another three and out for the Clemson defense. And this is Brown who fumbled the punt and the first Tiger turnover of the night is going to belong to Florida Atlantic. Tyler Brown who's got a touchdown catch to his credit tonight could not feel the punt cleanly from Lupo. And Florida Atlantic's going to have a plus field possession here. Yeah, and I think Dabo has got to be really annoyed with how ha this half has gone. A three and out by uh, you know, your offense. You know, defense is kind of, you know, somewhat sloppy, and then you have this come up in the kicking game. And you see Dabo right now trying to coach up Brown, you know, in terms of the return game, but but really. Not how Dabo Sweeney wanted the second half to go. No, nope. as pleased as he was with the first half, it feels like the Tiger head man is not very happy with a pair of three and outs and now fumbled on a punt return. Here's Richardson, plus field territory, middle of the field throw, and it's caught, and that's LeJonte Western. He'll be credited with 12 and a first down. Yeah, and if you're Florida Atlantic, it's good completion there. Nice job of standing in the pocket. You find Wester who you need to get the football to. And listen, I, I think anything's on the table. A little razzle dazzle, anything. Try to get something going. Try to find a way to score. You got your backup quarterback in the game. We haven't seen Kobe Lewis very much since. So Barry Mobley has taken a lot of the running plays, and he'll be the ball carrier here. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more on first down. Or Mobley. If you're Tom Herman, look, you're playing Illinois next week in Champaign. You're one and one. You've beaten Monmouth. You've lost to Ohio, who, by the way, beat Iowa State today. Side note. And now all of a sudden, you're trying to find your way with this football team in your first year, Tim. Let it go, right? I believe so, and I think that what Tom Herman and his staff wanted to see was improvement week to week, and you know that doesn't mean that it's always going to be reflected in the scoreboard, but it's just a good opportunity in this second half to build on some of the things that you feel like you need to get better at doing. False start. Offense number 64. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. That's Moranis, the center. Fourth penalty of the night on the Owls. The guy making his uh, 26th career start for the Owls. It's not what you need from your pivot. Five yards. Richardson, who transferred in from Central Michigan, and he matches timelines with when offensive coordinator Charlie Fry was there. Now wants to throw, and he'll just sail it in to the north stands across the way. Tyler Davis bearing down and a flag has come in there and it's a hold on the Owls. Holding. Offense number 71. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Dabo Sweeney will take that penalty. Uh, 
Florida Atlantic's going to be back near the Clemson 45. And I think it's plays like this. Regardless of the opponent, I think that's what Tom Herman would say in an environment like that. Quarterbacks escaping, you're a tackle. Like, don't get grabby with your hands. Let them throw the football away. Have something manageable. Richardson right in the middle of the field. That's Johnson the catch. Barrett Carter the hit for the Tigers. Well, Taylor told us that Dabo wanted to get into some of the depth. That has not happened yet here in the third quarter with about six minutes gone in the third frame. Because they haven't played yet. I mean, I, I think Dabo was almost treating this like, almost like you do a preseason game in the NFL. Give me a good series and I'll pull my starters out. Right. You don't give me a good series. Like, I, I'm going to wait until I see it before I take you out. Three down line for Clemson. They're going to hand the ball to Barry. And Mobley knocked away. So Barry Mobley took a big lick. And he'll be stopped at the 39. Xavier Thomas and Perry Carter involved in the fray. Well, you better identify where 54 and 0 are on every snap. Fourth down, and the Owls keep the offense on the field. Richardson. Dropping back, he'll cross field. Intercepted Woodass. Another one, second straight game for Wade Woodass, and he is knocked down just outside the 10 by Mobley. And Wade Woodass jumps in the seats. Well, you know, Dabo not happy with how things were going, and the play on the defensive side certainly get that going and you're going to see what as he's out here and he's just going to sink to the flat and you're going to see what happens with Richardson. He's working down the bottom of the screen doesn't like it. He's just trying to get the ball to Wester just throws it over his head and what as ball comes right to him and we got Dabo to get a smile on that one. Yep injured owl on the play at the Clemson bench yard interception return to go with a Interception return to 35 yards and a touchdown last week and Clemson starts at the 13 yard line of Florida Atlantic and Quadzilla Dominique Thomas is the ball carrier for Clemson with Kate Klubnick at the control. Terrific story on this young man out of Ohachi Alabama. Tim Hankus is the fifth time tonight Clemson has started to drive in plus territory. Klubnik to the end zone and throws it beyond the reach of Stilato. So third and one will be the next snap for these Tigers. And I like, I understand the situation of the game, but I like some of these opportunities that give these wide receivers one on one chances down in the red zone and. You know, just to, to work on it in live action to try to get on the same page. There's Brown and Randall to one side. There's a look at Stilato. And here is Thomas driving forward. And depending on how this is spotted, I think it'll be fourth and gold if he reached the three and a half here, but we'll see. And it appears the offense is. Oh, fourth down, and here comes the running stool, and they're going to take Stilato out. Add a tight end. Ennis and Jake running stool both on the field for the Tigers. Thomas stays in the game as the running back. Straight ahead, Thomas. And he cracked the three, so I think that's enough. We will see. Jackson ambushed the linebacker, made the play. Tim Hedgepeth gives it the eye test. And he's going to stop the clock with 6.34 to go. Wow. 
So this half continues to be a little bewildering for Clemson offensively. It does because offensively they've struggled. Obviously they get the huge play by Woodas and they get stopped on third and short and this one's close. Like he made the three, but did not make it by a link in the chain. How about that? Clemson and a win for Tom Herman's team. They may not have any points on the scoreboard, Tim, but that's a pretty good stand by the defense. It's a great stand by the defense. And I think Dabo has got to be, and you see him right now, furious is offense furious at his offensive line and really his offensive unit. Because in the second half, they really haven't done anything. So Garrett Riley huddles with that group on the offensive side. They'll now come back to the bench area. Meanwhile, Florida Atlantic will see the Clemson defense take the field, and we get our first look at some of those guys in the back end of that Tiger defense now. Pride and Koval are in the secondary. Here's Richardson now taking a pistol snap in his own end zone, dropping straight back. He wants to cut it loose downfield for Alexander, who cannot haul it in against Toriano Pride, and there's a late flag. Yeah, and I think that the fans don't like it, but his right arm, Pride is grabbing the right arm. Yeah, B.J. Alexander, the Kentucky transfer. Pass interference, defense number 23. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It, it, it's a it's a well designed play. They're trying to hit the post up over the top, coming off the play action. Just a good job of keeping his speed up, a little stick outside. I can get led across the field, and the fans don't like it, but he grabs the right arm. Pride does of BJ Alexander, which is why he ends up going up for it with one hand, and it was subtle, but it definitely was a grab. So Kobe Lewis has come back in the ball game to join Richardson now on the first down play that starts at the 18 after the penalty. And they're going to try and give Lewis a alley to run in and not very much. In fact, he'll be pushed back a yard or two. And we're starting to see Kobe McLeod as a Redshirt freshman played in two games a year ago. You see Peyton Page, he's a junior. Also in that defensive front now, DeMonte K. Hart. Get off and Parker are the ends for Clemson. And again, they try and get it back to the corner, and that goes nowhere. And that's Denoff leading the charge. There's a lot of speed on this Clemson defense. You, you basically see what happens when you just can't get to the second level. Like he's just not moving well enough up front to get to the second level. And you, know, you have a hard time moving up because they're big inside, but there's so much speed at linebacker. You saw Peyton Page come off the field. Big 6'4", 315-pound junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. That ball thrown out on the perimeter, caught by Sullivan, but not much of anything there, and all of a sudden, fourth and 11. So it'll be three and out if you take away the penalty. And Clemson's not going anywhere, and Florida Atlantic's not either. Tigers have had the better chances, but Florida Atlantic's had the benefit of a fumbled punt by Brown, but couldn't do anything with it. And Clemson had an interception by Woodass that they cashed out on downs. There's the punt by Lupo, and it's a good one. Backing up Brown, he'll play from the 30. 
Tyler Brown cuts it middle of the field. Look out. Here's Brown coming near side around the big man. And he'll be banged out of bounds by the putter at the 25-yard line. 37-yard punt. 55-yard return by Tyler Brown. Pretty, pretty good, good looking. And pretty good after he had the muff punt earlier. Obviously does a good job fielding this one. Hits it with a bunch of speed. And Dabo getting on his group about how they've played in the second half. But got a good defensive play, obviously, with the interception. And a really nice play on special teams right there. And the Tigers another plus field territory start at the 26 of Florida Atlantic out of four second half possessions three have started plus field territory. So the Tigers will have Klubnik back out there and Tim I'm trying to sort out it see if they're keeping some of the uh, Frontline guys on the offensive side in, and I think they are. Blake Miller still in there, right tackle. Mitchell Mays at right guard, and Putnam still the center. Here's Klubnik to work, and he'll shoot it downfield and looking for Stellato and broken up by Jaron Morris. Look, it's up. It's, it's our guy Jaron Morris again, showing up, making plays, and it's a bad decision by Klubnik. You got a post high safety, safety in the middle of the field. You can't throw a post to the hash mark. It's trouble, and he's fortunate that one wasn't picked off. Second down and ten. And Klubnik, who is now just one of seven here in the second half for two yards. Again from the pocket, tried to go to Adams and threw a fastball by him. It'll be third in the full ten. You know, I think when we saw the starters come out in the second half, you wonder, okay, like, what are they doing here? Just, hey, maybe get one good drive. And I think it's a smart move by Dabble because this is, I mean, you just mentioned it now, one for eight, two yards mm -hmm. for Cade Klubnik in the second half, and you can see the frustration on Dabble Sweeney's face. Keith Adams Jr., the running back. For the third and full ten here. Klubnik shoots it down the field, and that ball's caught, and that's Brown. Heck of a grab by Tyler Brown with Jaden Williams in pretty good coverage for Florida Atlantic. Yeah, excellent coverage, and it was a well-thrown ball, and a good job of being strong through the catch by Tyler Brown as it was trying to be raked out. We're going to hand the ball. No, Klubnik's going to keep it left side around the corner and knocked out of bounds by Anderson. Boy, that big defensive lineman, Evan Anderson, moves very well. Go back to that completion to Brown, and it's a good job of standing in there by Klubnik. Good accuracy, but see how Brown comes back and fights for the football and is strong through contact? For a 5'11", 180-pound true freshman receiver, that's a really nice play. Yep, 34 career touchdowns at Greenville High School for Tyler Brown. Had two catches for 21 yards at Duke. And now Clemson second and goal. And all of a sudden, Charge timeout. Tigers want a timeout. Clemson, their first of the half. They're going to talk seconds. about it. And we're going to take a quick trip around the ACC. Well, in Norfolk today, Wake Forest Trail 24 to 7 in the third quarter. They come all the way back. Mitch Griffiths, who had a tough afternoon, throws to Jamal Banks. Dave Clawson's team. Wins 27-24. They're now 3-0 with Georgia Tech next week in Winston-Salem. Heck of an effort by the uh, Demon Deacons today because you know, Ricky Ronnie's team had them dead to rights early. And, and we've seen Old Dominion. I think they've got some good stuff about what they're doing there. And so that's not an easy deficit to claw back from. By the way, Wake Forest survives Lamarian James fumble return and interception return for touchdowns to win the game. And you know that doesn't happen very much. No, it doesn't. And I will say this, you know, I feel like when people talk about Wake Forest, there's just so much emphasis on this slow mash and what they're doing on offense. But there's a mental toughness in that program where they're able to find wins. I think they're well coached and got a mentally tough football team. Brown on the quick slam throw from Klubnik. Touchdown for Clemson. 
Second TD catch of the night for Brown. That's a really good sign as Clemson, you know, searches for guys to be healthy and step up making plays for Kate Klubnick. And look, the ball's being spread around and a couple touchdown receptions for Tyler Brown is a very encouraging sign. Five plays on the drive. And the Tigers on the board on Klubnick's third touchdown pass of the night. Two of them to Brown. And the kick by Gunn is good. Have a night, Tyler Brown. Yeah, he's just going to win on an inside slant and man coverage. See the patience with the release? That's really good. You need that. Otherwise, the linebacker is going to get into that window. It's good quickness. It's good job catching the ball in contact twice on that drive and Kate Klubnik who has struggled in the second half able to deliver that. Tim I know it's a play but that's a tough throw isn't it with the defender and the like the linebacker going out and the DB trailing the receiver there. Yeah I mean really the linebacker you just have to feel if he's coming in your window or not it's man coverage. So he's chasing the back to the side of that slant. And so that's why we talk about things being a game of inches and small windows when you're in the red zone. The timing and patience of that release can't be so much that it eliminates your window. Don't forget, after a full day of football tomorrow, the ladies take over ACC Network. Gunn going to kick it away here to Kobe Lewis, who waits for the Owls. And there'll be no return there, so Florida Atlantic will scrimmage from its 25. And I told you Sunday's Ladies' Day on the ACC Network. Coverage will start at noon. Volleyball from Chapel Hill, Coastal Carolina, and the Tar Heels. And at 2 o'clock, women's soccer in Raleigh. Conference matchup with Pitt NC State. And then at 4 o'clock, volleyball from B.C. Merrimack and the Eagles all on ACC Network always available for you on the ESPN app. Daniel Richardson who has come in since Casey Thompson was injured. And the fifth possession of the second half for the Owls off the 25 and the Tigers pursuing it. Lewis on the carry looked like Peyton Page back in there to make a play. Kate Hart also the big tackle inside. You're gonna get tested now, Wes, on on this depth. Yep. Here's Richardson with time and good throw and catch, and that's Wester short of the 40 at the 38, but that's enough for the first down. Well, it's interesting to hear from Wes Goodwin yesterday because he rolled off. After he talked about the experience in the secondary, he rolled off guys that he was excited to see get a little more time as uh, Clemson starts to develop guys back inside. And one of the guys was Avion Terrell. That's Shelton Lewis there who made the play. He's a redshirt freshman. Good look at Lewis. Avion Terrell we talked about earlier that was a guy he specifically talked about. You know even think about like Torian Pride's just a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Jaden Lucas just a sophomore. Yep. Andrew Bakuba who you know we didn't see tonight is just a junior. He's been backed up by Cleo Barnes who's been a freshman who's been awesome. Yeah he's played well tonight and here's Kobe Lewis his best run of the night for Florida Atlantic will carry them to a first down at the 42 of Clemson. As we work our way through the final 90 seconds of the third. Can you think about some of these other guys too. Obviously Trotter and Carter are juniors, but Wade Wood has just a sophomore. He's made a, a few good plays. And so while they, I, I just feel like guys played a lot last year, whether it was injuries or whether whatever right. it was, just guys got valuable snaps yep. and they're benefiting from it now. Here's Richardson hit as he throws and the catch made by Johnson. But uh, Avion Terrell was right there. So Johnson will hold on, and that is close to another FAU first down. 
I think that Tim there's a little bit of a secret sauce involved in this right when you get guys and look let's be honest Clemson is always what in the top 20 of recruiting and usually in the top 10 here's Richardson flipping it to Lewis on the perimeter Terrell right there in the neighborhood to take him down be enough I think for the first down for FAU and uh, a knee injury that's significant enough to keep him out the rest of the game thank you coach thank you Thanks to Tom Herman for the visit. Richardson opened the fourth deep shot down the field. Johnson was there. And Barnes was defending for the Tigers to force the incompletion. I like that message from Tom Herman. I can get into some of these environments. Obviously, Florida Atlantic's trying to get anything going. You're losing 41 0. Why does it matter? You know? And it matters for every reason that he just said. Your teammates are going to see your effort at this stage of the game. You've got guys like Casey Thompson that wish they were still out there playing in this environment. If you want to play at the next level, Clemson's littered with guys that will play at the next level. This stuff will get watched by NFL scouts. I think it's a great message from Tom Herman. There's a throw to Wester on the perimeter. Put his foot in the ground and drives for about seven on second down. So it'll be third and three on the Toriano Pride time. Tom Herman now. They haven't been shut out in nine years. They lost 41 nothing at Alabama. They have not beaten a power five team since 2007 when they beat Minnesota in Boca. Gophers clearly distracted by the beach which is less than two miles away from the stadium. And since then they have lost 27 straight to power five teams. And of course the road struggle has been real the last couple of years with Willie Taggart at the helm. They went three and ten with the Owls who are at Illinois next Saturday. Saw the first down run by Lewis. He got up hobbling but stays in with Richardson. Quick throw and Wester another catch can't stay in bounds at around the seven. And it's guys like LaJonte Wester Tim. J. Ron Morris defensively that with Casey Thompson hurt they're the ones that have yep. to kind of lead the others here. There's no doubt about it and you just take a guy like Lester who I think is a really talented football player probably a future for him beyond FAU and you know I think one of the things I would do if I was evaluating him is say how hard did he play in this environment. Kevon Walker is the running back and coming into the ball game at quarterback is that Kobe Lewis that's not Kobe Lewis is it no it is the that's Michael Johnson Jr. who is the quarterback for the Owls personal foul face mask defense number five the penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the play automatic first down. So that is on Koval. So we get our first look at Michael Johnson. There's a on the face mask. And now we have a Clemson timeout taken. Michael Johnson Jr. is a transfer from Penn State into the Florida Atlantic program. You think Wes Goodwin and Dabo Swinney want this shutout? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no question. Johnson had two years at Penn State out of San Jose, California. Well, we got plenty of other action. Four other games going on involving ACC teams, and one of them's at Ross Aid Stadium tonight. Garrett Schrader with Syracuse up 7 0. And this is the second Tim of three rushing scores tonight for Schrader. He's such a good competitive runner, strong. I mean, he really is. And, you know, oftentimes it comes on runs that aren't design runs, things like that, where he drops back. And it's just a, it's a fast, big, strong runner. And obviously taking it to the Boilermakers. Dino Babers' team in the final minute, leading 28 to 20 and the football. Be a heck of a win, wouldn't it? Would be. Here is the 
carried by Johnson and pride is going to throw him out of bounds at the one. So it'll be second and goal. Nice one on one tackling from Toriano pride. Yeah, great tackle by pride. Pretty good move by Johnson and to, to keep Johnson who's a big guy out of the end zone. It's a nice tackle. Johnson going to run it this time to the left side and the Tigers aren't having that. Clemson shut the door pretty quick there. Capehart looped around. Looks like Kylan Griffin also is involved in the tackle for Clemson. Daniel Richardson has come back in. In motion goes Price, 14th play of the drive. Richardson wants to throw. And it hit the back end of the Clemson defender. LaJonte Wester was the intended receiver. Shelton Lewis was in coverage for Clemson. Now fourth and goal. Here comes Michael Johnson back to replace Richardson. We haven't seen Michael Johnson even think about throwing the football no, yet. And I think the fact that they just took him out on third down would lead you to believe that it's some type of run with him, but maybe that's the key breaker, Wes. Yep. Maybe this one's going up. Keep going, Walker. In the game, they're going to hand to Johnson, and does he get in? He does. With almost three minutes gone, here in the fourth quarter, Michael Johnson Jr. on a one-yard run. And that I think is what Tom Herman was talking about. Mm. You know, Michael Johnson Jr., who we haven't seen, obviously of a specific role and package they feel comfortable with with him and good physical run yep. to get on the board. 17 play or 15 plays, 75 yards in almost six minutes. And Lupo's point after is good. Well, Clemson won the first meeting 54 to 6 early September of 2006 and Florida Atlantic will not be shut out tonight here at Death Valley. Back to Tiger Town on a Saturday night. Atlantic since Casey Thompson was injured in the first half here tonight and a moment ago Johnson pushed it in from a yard out to get the Owls on the board. Kick it away and Kelly here to the near side on the return. They're cut across the 15, the 20, and taken down right around the 20 yard line. Tyler? Well, guys, it is extra yard for Teachers Week. We celebrate the role of teachers and their dedication to supporting student athletes inside and outside the classroom. So tonight, we are highlighting Miss Wallower, who was Will Shipley's third grade teacher at Weddington Elementary School. He says she was a special woman, hard on him, which is something he says he needed at that point in his life, and it showed him what he was capable of. He said he actually recently saw her last year because in true Will Shipley fashion, of course, he went back to Weddington Elementary to speak to his fifth grade class, the graduate waiting class that year and he says he does hope uh, that Miss Wallower can get out to a game before he gets out of Clemson guys. Wow. First down and 10 Tigers will scrimmage from the 20 with Hunter Helms out of West Columbia and he will get it on the perimeter and they'll pick up a couple of yards there. Uh, don't forget for 10 years ESPN has supported the College Football Playoff Foundation bringing the college football community together during Extra Yard for Teachers Week to celebrate and honor great teachers since its inception the CFP Foundation has recognized over a half million educators. For more follow at CFP Extra Yard. Jay Haynes in that running back spot with Hunter Helms. And Helms. Fires it across to Stellato, and that'll be enough for a first down, and a little more will be coming there. Dwight Toombs, the second, probably a little overzealous with the tackle. A little overzealous and personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number zero. That 15 yard penalty is added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. But how about Dabo? Garrett Riley letting Hunter Helms spin it. Spin it for the two, first two snaps out on the field. <laughs> Seventh career game, by the way, for Helms, who graduated 
in May. Good size quarterback, 6'2, 210. And inside, this is Haynes. This is a redshirt freshman from Roanoke, Alabama, who had 1,800 yards and 27 touchdowns as a senior. I, you know what? There's a look at Hunter. This is a guy who, I mean, it was Garrett Riley was just like, this guy's really good. I mean, like, this is a suitable backup who's been a part of the program, Tim, and, you know, he's talented enough that, you know, when you graduate, you could, you know, you got a year or two left, you might be able to go somewhere else and farm it out, right? Yeah, if that's what you desire, for sure. I would think that would be an opportunity or two where that could happen. And That's going to be his first incomplete pass of the year. And Marlon Bradley was kind of pressuring Helms. Yeah, you could tell that Garrett Riley liked the quarterback room because obviously club mix a, a young player. They've got Hunter Helms and Paul Tyson both older guys and you know, he commended Helms for his weight room work kind of change his body which is something they probably felt like he needed to do to become a better player. Dominique Thomas has come back in as the running back. Rick Helms here on third down and nine. Quick hitter, this is Thomas bouncing away here to the near side. First down for Quadzilla. Finally spun around and dropped at the 29 yard line by Smoke Mungin. And look at Helms, he's got him up on the line yeah, here. He's moving in, and look, part of this is look, you, you are trying to burn clock, but. You want real live reps for guys that may get in the game. Helm yep. certainly be one of those guys. And, and so they're operating as if this is, you know, a game that's contested. Sure. Under 10 to go. Another quick hitter from Thomas for a yard. Maybe two. And you got now some of the Tiger reserves, and here's Haynes replacing Thomas in the run game. We saw Keith Adams Jr. Briefly in a possession. And now Haynes will flex out to the right. Empty set for Helms. Quick throw on the perimeter. This is Haynes with a blocker. Hit cut at the 20, 15, and brought down around the 12. It feels like a, a loaded running back room, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, obviously, Shipley and Mafo have seen Adams. Dominic Thomas is technically the third back. There's Haynes, who's got a little giddy up to him. There's a fastball thrown. That's Hamp Green making the grab. Green had a catch last week in his 15th career game out of Mountain Brook in Birmingham. I think he had the Sports Center top 10 number one play, by the way, against the Buccaneers. No big deal. <laughs> Second down. Helms with a long look back toward that Tiger bench where Garrett Riley goes through a myriad of signals. And this is Haynes again. He'll have it first and goal now for Clemson at the Florida Atlantic, too. A lot to like about Haynes. And Clemson's on the move here. Two back set. Handoff is Thomas, and that's a Tiger touchdown. Well, Dabo talked a lot about, you know, a lot of down the line guys in terms of depth chart played last week. Felt like they played well. I think you'd say a similar thing for tonight. Yep. It's a you know, down the depth chart running backs that are running hard, playing well. Really, the first team offense that had the struggles in the second half. First touchdown for Dominique Thomas. Helms was four for five and 35 yards on the drive. And Clemson's got a 40 point lead again. And Gunn's point is good. The Tigers are on the way to two and one. And a high noon showdown next Saturday here against Florida State.
High Noon next Saturday on ABC. The Tigers and Knowles. Clemson's won seven straight. Florida State leads the series. And our friends at ESPN Analytics say that Florida State has a 70% chance to win. Do we know what that number was before the barn burner and Chestnut Hill? I don't know that I have that handy. Did so. that did that move the did that move the percentage? The analytic number, you mean? Yeah. Did that like the 70% win percentage? Did that was it? That was before today's game. Yeah, the 70 was. I would say that goes down then, wouldn't you? So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Mr. Carey, I well, am that, saying there's a chance. Well, that one in a million talk back at the hotel. The uh, well, then you have the you know, like we were talking with Davos Sweeney yesterday, the Duke game's kind of the unicorn, right? I mean, you think about all the things except the scoreboard and the turnovers for Clemson. Well, again, right. right, and there are game-altering plays, and there were certainly some rough ones for Clemson in that matchup, yeah. which made that lopsided. Sure, absolutely. And Richardson handing off. And Kevon Walker going to work. Walker, by the way, is a kid that originally started Florida Atlanta under Willie Taggart, transferred to Division II Tusculum, and then has come back last January to the uh, Boca Raton School, knocked away by Barnes. What a nice night for Khalil Barnes, by the way, to get ready for Florida State. <laughs> I'm surprised that, surprised that he's still in there. I know he's a young player. Gotta get him snaps, but you're gonna need a cold tub with some Epsom salt the night's in. And, and he's been outstanding. Yep. We're halfway through quarter four here. All of a sudden, third down and five. And Wester the catch. He tried to turn the corner on Barnes. It'll be enough for the first down, but not much after that. Well, we saw Jordan Travis get shaken up today at Chestnut Hill, then come back when a lot of folks were thinking that Travis was in real trouble to finish the ball game at, uh, at Alumni Stadium. Well, because he, he didn't finish the first half, Florida yeah. State just takes a knee at the end of the half, and mm -hmm. Tate Rodemaker, who ended up taking that knee, I guess the good thing for Florida State is did have two quarterbacks play a year ago. Both of them play fairly well. Yep. But Jordan Travis, he's a tough, great competitor. He's an excellent runner. I think he's a great decision maker. And Florida State wants to do the things that I think they have aspirations of doing this season. They need him to be healthy. Second down here, Richardson. Looking to throw again. Tigers flushing him out. That's Capehart chasing, and Richardson's just going to throw it over the top of the Tiger bench. And with the Knowles in our conversation, don't forget the latest installation into the ACC Network Series. We're number one. Premieres on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern here on ACC Network. The Chronicle of the 1999 Florida State Seminoles. More than 20 former team members, opposing players, and coaches interviewed for the documentary. There were some unbelievable players on that roster. I mean, take your pick of guys. Peter Bork? Yes, sir. That would have been a headliner for sure. Here is a shot in the middle of the field. That's LeJonte Wester holding on again. Khalil Barnes, the stop for Clemson. I, you know, Tim, we get we get into conversations like Florida State went, don't forget, went 70 and four. <laughs> 70. I mean, just in their, you know, they started this league and won 70 games, right? I mean, you start thinking about where Florida State was in the dominance of this league and what they did to change football. And I know that was discussed a lot. You know, in their conference history, especially this past summer, but you take the teams that the Knowles brought into the league. And remember now, Clemson had had a national championship. Wester almost flags that in. Clemson had had a national championship in the 80s with Danny Ford. But 
you look at certain particular teams, I mean, for instance, you had Chris Winkie was the quarterback of the 99 team. You start looking at the running backs. Travis Miner, Davey Ford, Nick Maddox, who was a terrific player out of the state of North Carolina. Danny Kendra was the fullback. Peter Warwick, you mentioned. How about Snoop Menes? He was on that team. How about Lavernius Cole? Trouble Coles, yeah. He was. And then we haven't even started with the household names that developed on the defensive side. There's Walker bursting through. Best run of the night for the Owls. 22 yards. And we'll get a break in the action here as we're closing in on five minutes to go. Clemson on the win, on the way to win number two. Stage. Yes, superhero energy on fire. Yes, because here she will reach higher. ACC Women's Fall Sports Sundays on ACCN. This is how we do it. here with the Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update and how about what we saw from Garrett Schrader and Syracuse. Just one of his four rushing touchdowns on the day. He ran for over 200 yards also threw for nearly 200. They win it 35 to 20 over Purdue. Kelsey thanks more coming up with our friends at the huddle following the game. Schrader with a Hasselbeck like four touchdown runs. Let's go. And they're going to flip it to Wester in space, trying to get here to the near side, and the orange shirts find him. Clemson makes the play. Jamal Anderson Jr. is a freshman from Buford, Georgia, played at Mill Creek. Son of the former Pro Bowler. There he is. Where's Dad's number? Jamal played, Big Jamal played his college ball at Utah. His son was a terrific player in Metro Atlanta last week. Walker makes a stop. There's a look at the freshman. And Tim, it brings to mind now. Here again, we're watching a lot of young guys get some experience. Another strong recruiting class by Clemson and player development. And I think really it speaks to, you know, this notion that, like, hey, Clemson's done a bad job with the portal. They have not hmm. gone into the portal and and, and really made this roster better. And I think that Dabo would kind of make the argument as you just look at the, the fewest first year transfers. Look at the group right in front of them, Georgia. Well, the reason is they're good. Don't forget, as soon as we're done tonight, the huddle is with us here at Clemson. They'll dive into the performance by the Tigers, Dabo Sweeney, and who is the second best team in the ACC? You may be surprised what EJ and Eric and Coach Rick and Eddie Royal have to say. That's coming up right after our coverage here tonight. 345 left. The great grandson of Paul W. Bryant, Paul Tyson, has come into the ball game at quarterback now. Grad student from Trustville, Alabama. Started his career at Alabama, played 13 games last year. Was at Arizona State. And this is his second appearance for the Tigers. He was three for three last week throwing the football. So Tyson works. And I think he's got Keith Adams Jr. with him in the backfield. He does. And Adams going to get to carry here. Big collision. A little post scrimmage. Pushing and shoving on Jalen Wester's hit. I'll tell you what, I can tie this whole show together tonight I mean, in about two players. I mean, I'm gonna, we're getting ready to tie the whole show together. Yep. As uh, Clemson makes a change here, Jarvis Green has come in to play with Adams in the backfield. Now, Keith Adams Jr. is the son of a great linebacker at Clemson, Keith Adams. Who's a terrific player here, nicknamed the Termite. And his son's off to a great start. Here's Tyson overthrowing uh, Clay Sweeney, by the way, who is the last of the three Sweeney boys to play for his dad. Now, Tyson will come out. Keith Adams Jr., 
Keith Adams Sr. are the son of Julius Adams. Now Keith Jr. Correct. is the grandson. Keith, who played linebacker here, is the son. And Julius Adams played with Don Hasselbeck. I mean, it's a it's a full circle moment. Julius Adams of the New England Patriots with my father, Don Hasselbeck. I played with Keith Adams. There you go. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Berlin Thunder of NFL oh, Europe. Come on, which let's go. Let's go. I think that I'm sure there's a lot of Berlin Thunder fans still watching, <laughs> remembering <laughs> Keith from his. Days as the Berlin Thunder. as the Berlin Thunder World, yeah. World Bowl ten champs. And if you don't believe us, guess what, kids? We've got football cards to prove oh, it tonight. Oh, look at that! Yeah, huh? Julius Adams. Yeah. The big Don Hasselbeck. Look in at there. Don. Big Don looking strong, isn't he? In I mean, the... it's hard to beat the, that old Patriot Pat. You know that that yeah. logo. Yeah. It's also hard to beat the the single bar coming down on the face mask. Yeah. Yeah. Those were those were the days of that. And in all seriousness, Keith Adams, who played here, he would hit you. Yes, he, he said would. his nickname was a termite. I mean, he was only about five foot nine, but That's correct. he hit about as hard as anyone that I think I ever played with. And when you think about guys playing inside linebacker, you got six foot six, three hundred and fifteen pound linemen trying to cover you up, but he was quick and tough and just pack some punch and that's why it's encouraging if you're a Clemson fan today because Keith Adams Jr. I think runs with his father's linebacker mentality. Yeah, it sure does. That's a fun note where we can tie all this together. You see at the top of the screen by the way the triple header for you next week here on ACC Network. And there's a throw and a catch going out of bounds. Florida Atlantic's Devin Price. Who's a transfer from Texas A&M, junior from College Station. We'll start with Army and Syracuse. By the way, Army hosting a, a win. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we'll see Army and Syracuse. You saw the rest of the Boston College and Louisville's on that list next week. Cards a win today over Indiana at Lucas Oil. And then Tim Taylor and I will join ACC Huddle. We'll be at Acrisure Stadium where the Three Rivers meet next Saturday night for Pitt and North Carolina. That was Sweeney. I'm fired up at the official. Still litigating here with uh, 72 seconds to go in the game. <laughs> and his team leading 48-7. And there's a ball being thrown and caught. My goodness. Javion Posey throws it to Devin Price for the Owls touchdown. With 103 to go in the game. Tom Herman said resume game. What kind of football team we got? Trying to make plays. A little razzle dazzle. We've seen a couple of these. Actually saw something similar in the Army game earlier today. The, this one's not a double pass, it's a handoff. And yep. Dabble Sweeney was working the official. You could hear him. You know, Mike picked him up, said, That's 100% on you, ref. Wow. Still fighting. And the point after good, 48-14, with a minute three to go. And Dabo Sweeney on the way to win 163. He'll be two away from the great Frank Howard. And he's talking to Tim Hedgepath here, the referee now. I, I think he's he's kind of fired up about I think what he was fired up about a four progress play earlier if I'm if I'm reading his, his lips correctly and and then what happens is I mean, he's talking about like hey like let's still officiate the game as if it's in contention I think and that does bother coaches especially someone like Dabo who is trying to get as many guys as he can into the game where. You know, he's trying to give them legitimate opportunities to have success, but this is this is something on a 48 to 14, and, yep. and he's as fired up as if it was 14 to 14. Well, when we visited with him yesterday, he knows he thinks the potential of this team, Tim, is really good, but he knows that they got to get there. They're not there yet, and. 
look, this is a 48-14 game with a minute three left. But he knows the, how high the stakes are on that Saturday at noon, too. Yeah, and I will say this, too, when you, you think about that, though, like in terms of one of the things he believes in. There's Jarvis Green, by the way, on the kick return and out across the 35. One of the things he believes in is look, when he plays some of his down the roster players, it keeps them engaged. There's a reward for practicing hard. And by showing this kind of emotion and being on the, the officials, he's not just on the sideline having a conversation with somebody. He's invested into what's going on on the field when he's got reserves out on the field. And I, I will say, that matters. Yep. It, 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 I've been a guy that's been laid onto the field, whether it was a preseason game or whatever it was. You care when the guy in charge is still invested into when you're on the field. So Clemson goes to their fourth quarterback of the night, and this is Trent Pierman, who is a young man in the Clemson program whose dad, Danny Pierman, has been a longtime staffer for Dabo Sweeney. Danny coached many years at the University of Virginia, a couple of years at North Carolina, has been at Clemson a while, and a terrific figure among football in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And Trent is his son who played here locally at Daniel High School. And he gets to clean up the final half minute of another Tiger win. Well, Clemson won in 2006. 54 to 6 behind the efforts of James Davis and Reggie Merriweather and a punt return by Jacoby Ford. And tonight, Nate Wiggins set this game on fire on the fourth snap when he picked off Casey Thompson and ran it back 46 yards. And from that point on, Clemson never looked back, Tim. Well, they never did. And listen, it wasn't smooth sailing.